Welcome to my last connection point as president of the American Immigration Lawyers Association. And today I have the pleasure to welcome Jeremy, the president-elect for now, but soon to be president of AILA, to talk about his year and what he plans to accomplish. Welcome, Jeremy. How are you? Hey, it's great to be with you, Alan. Thank you. Why don't we start by just talking a little bit about how you became president or how you will become president of the American Immigration Lawyers Association, a little bit of background, just so people feel like they know you. Yeah, Alan, you know, coincidentally enough, in July of 2022, uh, it will be my 25th anniversary as an ALA member. I joined in July of 1997 uh, as a brand new attorney who had just hung his shingle out a few months after law school and passing the bar. I didn't take immigration law in law school. I wasn't even sure what immigration law was. Uh, it was just a, it was something that I saw as a good potential complement to a criminal defense practice. Mm. And uh, and they realized quickly wow. that in the triad region of North Carolina, which is where I live, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point, uh, that there was a huge need for immigration legal services, hugely underserved populations. And what happened was I quickly joined AILA because I was told that mm -hmm. you couldn't practice without it, uh, which frankly is something I still believe. And uh, so I joined found mentors, started to learn this craft so that by the time that something called the Life Act was passed into the law mm -hmm. in December of 2000, uh, that created a tidal wave of immigration work, which overtook any last remaining criminal and traffic defense practice I had. <laughs> and wow. so, so since the beginning of 2001, I've practiced exclusively immigration but because of that criminal defense background, I, I've been able to really hone my skills into the area of immigration and removal defense, uh, which is a passion of mine, Alan, and has been a big part of my leadership journey. I uh, rose through the ranks of the Carolinas chapter mm -hmm. in, uh, during the last decade and, and was chapter chair of the Carolinas chapter from 2008 to 2010. Um, and as we've talked about in other forums over this past year, Alan, uh, I then attempted to run for national office with AILA and mm -hmm. failed, failed, okay. failed several times, to be honest, but I, I persevered. I, I, mm -hmm. I just kept trying, building those connections, building a resume. I, I, I believe I made a name for myself in liaison, uh, both with EOIR and with ICE. And finally, I believe I came in fifth or sixth place uh, for elected director in 2015, mm -hmm. which was good enough. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, the next year, I decided to run for uh, the executive committee. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I won. And it's been just an amazing, amazing journey, which I have uh, been just so blessed to have you as a co-pilot uh, for over the last five years. It's been great. Right. And I'm happy to change seats with you. So I don't have to drive. I can sort of ride at this point. So I'm the 75th president. You will be the 76th president. Do you remember who was president when you joined it? No. I don't. <laughs> that's, that's totally fine. What other unique thing about you I find interesting is that you're president from a small chapter and you're actually, I think, the second president from your state. Is that correct? That's correct. Jack Penix was president in uh, the 1990s. And so a lot of our year generally focused in one area. And I tried to focus on diversity and diversity in the sense of having the members be seen and heard. And so what do you plan for your year? What is really important for you? In my year, it's really what ALA member Bob Deasy used to, or has called riding the wave. Uh, when I joined ALA leadership back in 2015, raising the practice, really the art of removal defense was my central focus on the educational side of ALA membership. Entering into leadership, 
uh, something that quickly also became uh, my mission and passion was professionalism and civility. Uh, so I played an active role and a member of the team in, in creating ALA's first civility code uh, and creating the infrastructure to make uh, policies like the civility code possible. Uh, it's had the impact that it needed to. Uh, what it's made, in, in my view, is an open and safe space for ALA members, and it's really critical and integral to ALA's DEI mission, just mm -hmm. creating that safe space and a place at the table for everyone. Uh, this year, uh, we're going to continue those efforts, and we're going to build on it by creating uh, an interest group for family immigration family practice. We have an interest group for business. We have an interest group for removal defense that actually started during our leadership journeys. We need, we need it to not forget about our family practitioners. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm super excited about that launching this year. Uh, the second part, Alan, as you know, is technology. Mm -hmm. Number one on AILA's annual plan as passed by our board of governors last February, and it will continue to be number one. Uh, this year, the focus has been on searchability uh, at ALA.org. And if that goes well, the next step is really community. You know, we have all of these disparate means of communication. You've got the message center. You have ALA 8 and all the emails. You have dozens of listservs. Uh, you know, what if our technology could make it easier than ever to communicate with the member catered to that member's practice and mm -hmm. also make it easier than ever for ALA National to get information from the field from members. Uh, that is critical to our government relations mission. Uh, and so that's really going to be my focus uh, over the next 12 months. Good. So now let's do some fun things. Let's loosen it up so that members, I think one of the things that we did this year at Tom as a whole, besides visiting every chapter, is to make ourselves approachable so that people have a way to walk up to us and say that they know us and they feel us and, and all these things. So let's do some quick things about you that would make people feel like they're either connected to you or disconnected or have some point to sort of say with you. So what's your favorite instrument? I uh, Guitar. And I actually have, I've been playing guitar since I was 13 years old. Uh, FYI, I'm 50. Uh, wow, so it's been great. a while. What's your favorite color? Blue. Kind of boring, but there it is. <laughs> How many kids do you have? Uh, I have two incredible kids that I'm hoping a lot of you will meet in New York. Uh, Ethan, my oldest, is a student at NYU. He's 21 years old. My amazing daughter, Sophie, is 19 years old, and she is a student at UNC Asheville. Uh, and she's pursuing pre-law. She's interested in, in following in our footsteps and becoming uh, an attorney. And your wonderful wife, Cindy. Well, let's just bring her into the group. So talking about the family, that she's amazing and has been nothing but a, a wonderful person to be around and to sort of hang out with throughout the year. Um, Coke or Pepsi? Coke with a bullet. As a matter of fact, during COVID, I don't know what happened, but Regal Theater switched from Coke to Pepsi. Ooh. And... I'm, I'm still outraged. Oh, wow. <laughs> What's your favorite book? Uh, my, uh, historically, my favorite book has been A Prayer for Owen Meany. Uh, it's still that story of evolution and just the, the type of almost um, Homer Odyssey type journey. Uh, those stories still hit me, uh, hit me the most. Cats or dogs? Dogs. And you have one, right? I have two. I have, a, I have two Australian Labradoodles. Uh, okay. I'm told the, the Australian part is important. Cindy has pretty bad allergies. And mm -hmm. so uh, these Labradoodles are hypoallergenic. They don't shed as, as much as others. And so they are parts of our family. Zoe and Baxter. And that yes, Baxter was named after the Baxter from Anchorman. Oh, that's great. Batman or Superman? Batman. Okay. So it's funny that you asked this question. And I promise you, Ayla audience, we did not rehearse this. Yeah. Um, a band that I uh, played in for years, all comprised of Gen Xers. It was two attorneys, 
two teachers and an accountant. And we were all born in the 70s. And our band name was Super Friends after the cartoon from the 70s. Mm -hmm. And so we all, a part of our shtick was to wear a superhero t-shirt, I wore Batman. That's excellent. That's excellent. So as many of you know, it has been an absolute pleasure for me to be president of the American Immigration Lawyers for this year. And during my matriculation with XCOM, Jeremy and I became very good friends because I didn't even know Jeremy before. And we are opposite in so many ways with regards to our practice, where we live, kind of music that we listen to a lot of times. But we grew to be really great friends in a really great community. And I think our relationship speaks to the power of AILA and what the benefit is. And that's why we didn't want to talk a lot today about all the benefits that Ayla has. We wanted you to feel like and meet the next president so that when you see him walk in the halls, you can walk up to him and say, oh, I also have this dog, or I also like that drink, or whatever, because I think that we're in a space right now where it's really important that every member feels that they have access to someone from XCOM. And I think Jeremy will continue that legacy with us um, to sort of be there in that space. So that's the greatest thing that I've sort of felt about XCOM is that I wasn't really a battle against people in leadership, it was more of a battle against what was challenging leadership. And that made my year just amazing. So Jeremy, as we sort of walk away from this, what message do you want to tell the members to be ready for next year? Your, your words are very impactful uh, to me, Alan. They speak to me because that's exactly the message that our group together have been trying to get across to this membership all year. And that's that we are AILA, mm -hmm. uh, all of us. You can be politically conservative. You could be politically liberal. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's a place at the table for you because we need everyone's voice. We need those members that are working to bring in those job creating entrepreneurs. And we need those individuals at the southern border rolling up their sleeves and doing the incredibly hard and emotionally draining work of helping refugees at the southern border. We need everyone, we need everyone's voice. And so over the next year, it is my mission to make the tools available, whether it's our educational programming, our technology, uh, and just the way that we conduct meetings, more uh, open, more inclusive, and just more inviting to everyday members. Uh, it's my pledge and, and I hope I can fulfill it. Thank you so much for being here. And I look forward to helping you on your journey to the great success that we'll celebrate next year at this exact same time. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to my last connection point.